there, welcome to another episode of GUR Codes. Continuing on my last episode, we're going to talk about M-Fractor once again. Um, if you don't know what M-Fractor is, M-Fractor is, well, basically what it says here, incredible tools for Visual Studio Mac. It helps you speed up your development work for uh, Xamarin Forms specifically in Visual Studio for Mac, and it can do a lot of awesome stuff. Um, I know Matthew. Matthew is the author, the inventor of this wonderful, wonderful tool. And um, I'm in no way affiliated with him. I'm not getting paid to do this. I just want to make sure that everyone knows about this really cool stuff that you can do with MFractor today. Um, if we scroll down here, you can see it for yourself. It's all on mfractor.com, um, advanced XAML tooling. Um, and actually, this is the one we are going to see in this episode, the Simplified Asset Management. Um, it also has a lot of MVVM stuff. And in my last video, we have looked at the font importer. So you can import font, um, font files really easy. And now we're going to see a similar thing, but for images. So let's just dive in right now. Here we see Visual Studio for Mac. Let me zoom this in for you a little bit. And we have a label. Let's change this to an image straight away. So what we're going to do is import an image and do some more stuff with it. So in MFractor, there's this really cool thing um, that is called Manage Image Assets. So this will open a new pane here on the right. And you can directly see that there is an icon image in my Android project. It is not available in my iOS project. This is just a file new Xamarin Forms application, so there isn't much in here yet. Um, but you can already see a lot going on right here. But let me first show you how to import a new image, because this is really, really cool. If you have been working with um, Xamarin, uh, iOS, Android apps, you know that you will have to supply each image in a whole bunch of different formats, like different resolutions, um, you have to resize them, you have to know them by heart. If you've done it often enough, then you will know all the resolutions uh, from the top of your head. Uh, but that's not information you want in your head, right? Um, you want to just focus on code and not be worried about all this uh, bunch of things that designers come with and they're just a burden, right? So we want to have this image importing as easy as possible. So now we have the import image asset, which is going to do that for us. In this window, we can simply choose the image. So I've gone for the MFractor logo and we can click that and you can say, okay, under which name do we want to import this into our project? This is going to be mfractor.jpg. I'm just going to leave it at that. And then you can say, I want to include that in whatever projects that are available in your solution. And whenever you see me switching between these different projects, you will automatically see here on the bottom that it will show you the formats that's going to import. So based on the image den density that we see here, um, it's going to decide which versions it's going to create. So here you say this image that I've chosen is going to be like the largest one um, that's going to be imported. If I would set this to two, it's just going to create the, um, the, the one version um, because it won't scale up. It won't enlarge or blow up your image. It will only scale down and create that version for you. So if you want to import an image, you will always have to create the biggest version that you want to have, and then it will automatically create the smaller versions for you. The same thing for Android, you can choose whichever version this will be. And whenever you change that, you can see here at the bottom, uh, the horizontal scroll bar, you can inspect which images are going to be generated, uh, in which folder, and what their dim dimensions will be. You can also choose to resize the image, uh, the original image. So you can see that here on the right. And with resizing the image, you can just say, okay, I want to resize the image first to a width and height of uh, 100, for example. It will automatically calculate the ratio so your image won't look funny, it won't look stretched or, or blown up or whatever. Um, it will just do that for you. So let's go, go back to the original value here. That was good enough. Um, also, do you want to add a MS build entry for it? Yes or no? Uh, typically, that's something you want to do. Um, and also, here is a very interesting but uh, not enabled option right now. Optimize the image asset. 
I will get back to you uh, on that in a little bit. If I now just say import the image, it will work a little bit. And do I want to import another image? No, not right now. And you will see the new image is uh, imported here in a couple of formats for iOS. And whenever I switch to Android, you can see the formats here as well. So that's a lot, lot easier than doing this manually, right? If I go now to the Solution Explorer, you will also see them show up here. I go to Resources, and in the drawable, you will see the right versions under the right subdirectories. And also for iOS, um, you will see the right resources with the right file names show up here. So if I go back to my image, I can just say Source is, you can see this is also m -factor magic going on here. Um, you can uh, have this IntelliSense right here, and it will tell you in this tooltip which versions are available in the different projects. Um, and you can just say, okay, um, do that. And I think you can also hover over here, uh, which is also an M factor feature. And you can see a, a preview of the image that is going to be shown here. Um, so let's do this in the center. So it will look a bit better. And let me switch to iOS because iOS is awesome. And then whenever I run this, you will see that this image shows up nicely as you would expect. So nothing fancy going on here. There we go. It's not entirely in the center as I would want it, but you can see that the, uh, the logo is popping up here. Now, if we go back to the optimize all images, you can see another reference here, the button down in the bottom. Uh, what it can do, it can also use tiny PNG to um, optimize your images, so it will make it a lot smaller. Uh, I don't know how tiny PNG does his magic, but um, actually today I've seen an image go from 1.9 megabytes to um, 1.6 kilobytes or something. It it's really blows my mind. I don't know what they do, but it's amazing. Um, and it's built right into Amfractor right now. Um, the only thing why it's grayed out for me right now is because you need an API key. So if I go into the preferences here, um, you can see here down at the bottom the tiny PNG API key. You can just get an API key. You will go to this website. You will have to register. You can get a uh, API key for free. And I think you can get like, you can get 500 compressions for free uh, per month. And well, you can go even beyond that, uh, but it will cost you a little bit for, uh, for each image. Uh, you can see the cost right here on the left. Um, so it doesn't cost much. And um, yeah, it will save you a lot of uh, package size on your application. So it's really worth checking out. And it's built right into Amfractor. So whenever I would fill in an API key, let's just do some dummy things here. Um, and you can also say, okay, I want to optimize the images by default whenever I import it through the import wizard that we just saw. And then the checkbox will be automatically checked whenever we import the image. We can also bulk optimize them by uh, going in here and just say optimize all images and it will go through this list and optimize all the images that are in here. There's a couple of other small features that are in here which come in really handy. Um, if you right click here on this image, you can say delete and it will come up with the projects. So it will delete all the variants that you need um, from all the projects that you see right here. Um, unfortunately, there's no option to check that you only want to delete it from uh, one project and not the other. So maybe that's a, a feature request right, right here. I will let uh, Matthew know right after uh, recording this. And also you can say, uh, I want to search for usages. So what this does, um, it will tell you what it does um, because it will just search for mfractor.jpg um, like you would search for uh, search in files. So it does nothing more than that. It's just a shortcut for doing this. And um, But still, you can just see, okay, I'm using mfractor right here. And you can see all usages here um, right before you will delete it through this other uh, handy menu option here. That's all I have to tell you about the image assets. Um, I hope you learned something from this and that you are convinced that MFractor is indeed a really cool tool. If you want to go out and get MFractor yourself, this is a paid feature, um, but it's well worth your money. You can just go to mfractor.com, 
um, and you can get it right now. I think there is a trial option or at least you can get to play around with it uh, uh, for free. There are some free options, but if you want to get the real magic and the real productivity, then uh, you will have to pay a couple of bucks. But but I promise you it's really worth it and you will earn it back uh, because of all the time you save. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel for more awesome content coming in soon. And I'll hope you watch the next one. Thank you.